everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm courtney ryan and today we're going to be going over the biggest social media turnoffs as social media continues to become an everyday part of our lives an even bigger part of our lives as the days go on i think it's important to be self-aware and to understand the things that you might be doing online that are huge turnoffs and maybe just not representing you in the best light Truthfully, there are a ton of things people do online that are huge turnoffs, the same way that there are turnoffs in person as well. Um, it's the same thing online. Of course, what you choose to do with your online persona is totally up to you. This is just some friendly advice to help make a good first impression, take it or leave it. So what do we wanna make sure we are not doing? Number one, the depressing attention-seeking posts. There's a time and a place, and a lot of the times the internet is not the time or the place. Sharing too much or emotional vomiting, as I referred to in my vulnerability video, is not attractive in person, it's not attractive online, and I would argue that it's even more unattractive online because not only are you just sharing this with one person, you're sharing this with the entire world. Keeping some things private is actually very attractive and shows you aren't constantly looking for attention or validation from strangers on the internet. Number two kind of ties into the last point I just made, but this one is complaining and negativity. Someone who is constantly complaining or being a negative Nelly 24 seven is just a real bummer to be around in person or to follow online. If you're always woe is me, throwing a little pity party, playing the victim and being negative, it's gonna be a huge turn off to people who come across your profile. And I'm not saying you have to act happy all the time. Life is not always sunshine and rainbows and it's okay to have a bad day or to disagree with something or to complain every now and then. But if you're someone who is doing this legitimately all the time, it gets really old and people are going to hit that unfollow button faster than the speed of light. And the reason why this is so unattractive is because you can't control what happens to you, right? But you can control the way that you respond and react to it. So if you are showing everyone on the internet that the way you react and respond is a poor one or a bad one, this is not gonna be a good look and it's a huge turnoff. And the way that people respond and react says a lot about them. So if something bad happens to you and you get on your story and complain about it for an entire month, you seem a little nuts. Being able to find solutions to problems rather than just posting complaining all the time online is going to come across a lot more attractive than the negative Nelly who can never find a solution or a positive in any situation. Number three is posting when intoxicated. And the reason why this is so unattractive is because it is a slippery slope that often doesn't end well. Posting online when you're intoxicated is a bad idea for a lot of reasons. The first one being that you have a lack of judgment over what you're doing, right? You're maybe not in your correct headspace. You're maybe not carrying yourself the way that you would like the world to perceive you. Um, and it's just not gonna end in great results. It's also just a bad look to get on your story when you're like slurring your words or sloppy drunk or whatever it is. I mean, think about a potential job interviewer seeing you post that on your story. You're not getting that job if you're posting sloppy drunk on your stories all the time, or at least I know I wouldn't hire someone who was acting that way. So be sure to keep this in mind. I think it's really important to be mindful of the way that you're carrying yourself on your social media and understand that, you know, social media is often just a glimpse into what is going on. So it's fine to have fun and to, you know, drink with your friends or whatever, if that's something that you're into. But when you're posting just little snippets of it online, the person that's viewing is not getting the full picture of what's taking place. So the clarity of judgment there really isn't present and it often just comes across as a really bad look. Number four is fake flexing. And if you've been following me for quite some time, you've probably heard me say this many times before. A lot of things here can be included in this fake flexing phenomenon, but one that I see a lot is posing in front of cars. Um, it's one thing if you're at a car show or if you're really into cars and your account is kind of dedicated to that, that's a whole different story and kind of an exception. But if you're just a guy who saw a Ferrari on the side of the road and you go pose in front of it and post it on Instagram acting like it's yours, turn off. The same could be said about a private jet. If the private jet is not yours, don't take a picture with it or pretend that it's yours. We don't want any fake guru vibes here and that's often the way that these photos come across. So again, a lot of things included in this one, but pretending to be something you're not is often never a good look. And even if you do have these things, it's often a turnoff still when someone is bragging about it or flexing about it all the time, because it often just shows insecurity and that you're only doing these things to please other people, um, which is not a good look either. Number five, we have shirtless pics. And I think this one needs a little bit of explanation because there are some exceptions to this one, just like anything else. Um, one exception off the top of my head that I can think of is if you are at the beach or the pool or on vacation, it's totally okay to post a picture at the beach with your friends without wearing a shirt, right? That's normal. 
that gives the the thumbs up from me or maybe you are really into fitness maybe you are at a bodybuilding competition and you post your photos and you're really proud of yourself or you've lost a bunch of weight and you post your before and after photos those get thumbs up from me but the shirtless photos that i cannot get on board with are the ones where a guy is in a crusty dusty bathroom and he takes a mirror picture with a toilet in the background i can't see your face the mirror's dirty there's a big smudge across it and you're just coming across very f-boy douchebag by taking that shirtless mirror photo so again use your best judgment with this one but just my most honest advice to you is that it often comes across very douchebag vibes uh, and not the greatest number six is who you're following and again if you've been here for a while you have definitely heard me say this one before too the content you consume and the people that you follow and interact with says a lot about you whether you like it or not if i go to your instagram profile and you are following all naked girls I'm gonna think you're a dirty dog who just wants to sleep around and hook up and doesn't want a nice relationship with a healthy girl, okay? I'm just being so honest when I say that's immediately where my mind goes and you are not someone that I would want to be with, nor would any other healthy, mature girl. So just clean up who you're following and make sure it's a good representation of you and your character. And maybe think twice before following a bunch of naked Insta models who only post thirst traps. And just to wrap everything up on the list today, number seven here, we have a lack of self-awareness. So this is kind of the red bow on the present that ties everything on this list together. Um, I think a lack of self-awareness means that you're probably doing the things on this list. I think when you're online and when you, you know, are representing yourself online and you want it to be accurate, it's important to have a good level of self-awareness. I think the way that you represent yourself online says a lot about you um, and it should be an accurate representation of who you are and your character whether this be your Instagram profile or your other social medias or your dating profiles, it should represent who you are. And I'm not trying to be mean or kick anybody while they're down or tell people not to follow their dreams or whatever it is, but there are some people online who just clearly very much so lack self-awareness. I am just trying to save you from the little time hop or Facebook memories that pop up 10 years from now of your status that you posted that makes you absolutely cringe and want to hide in your bedroom for the rest of your life. Uh, my Facebook memories that pop up every day are like 10 years ago from when I was 16 or even 13 years ago from when I was 13 and my posts were cringe, okay? These things pop up and I am just like, Courtney. I didn't even get a Facebook account until I think I was 12 or 13. And even now I look back and I'm like, mom, why did you let me post that? Why did you let me post school sucks? Ooh, on my status. Like, I don't know. I just like think when you look back at those things and you have more of a level of self-awareness now, it's very obvious how cringe and just not great those posts are so that is what i'm trying to do for all of you with this video is to just you know give you a little bit of self-awareness let's have a little bit of self-reflection and make sure that we are posting things online that accurately represent who we are and that might change the older you get and i think if you're not looking back on yourself 10 years ago and cringing maybe you haven't grown enough so you know we can embrace the cringe a little bit but again just really make sure you have a healthy dose of self-awareness in your real life and online i think it's really important and ultimately helps for your growth as a person so that's all i have for biggest social media turnoffs if you like this video or found it helpful be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when i release new content let me know in the comments below some cringy things you think people do on social media you can let me know cringy things you think women do as a woman i am aware of the things that i think women do that are cringy um, there are definitely plenty of them just as much as men so let me know down in the comments would love to get a fun conversation going about that down below if you haven't already be sure to follow me over on instagram at courtney christine ryan love connecting with all of you guys over on there as well call me out if i post anything cringy love ya appreciate it as always thank you all so much for watching and i will see you all next time